Good morning, lovable souls. <clears throat> I'm actually feeling like my vo my vocal cords are being affected a little bit. My voice feels a little higher now than it used to. I don't know what that means about my vocal cords, but I've been experiencing that the last few days. I have to let go of that. Somehow I still breathe. Yay and fuck. So I'm really enjoying the benefits of revealing and sharing the things that I don't think are lovable about myself. And, and it's going deeper and deeper. And the more I share, the more I see. And it feels really alive doing it, being willing to just risk all of you because I have to have me. So the topics that I feel most trigger people that are addiction, being a sociopath, and death. So I fantasize about death and going home. It's too big of a commitment though. That's the thing. I'm not really a commitment guy. Suicide and death is a fucking huge commitment. Man, it's like you're committing to that. There's no turning back. Might be why I'm still here. I'm I'm seeing now that my whole life has just been a holding pattern though, mainly of waiting. Waiting to die. T V, internet, fiction books a plethora of addictions and distractions and time killers that I see now for what they are. Now that time has completely shifted, there really isn't any. My relationship with time has become much more clear. There isn't any time. It's an illusion. It's a, it's a sales job. And so without time, if I take away the concept of time, what am I doing? If I'm not living, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to die. So that's really what this life has been. Too afraid to live and too afraid to die. That's the truth. Um, this waiting pattern, holding pattern of waiting to be taken home by Waldo is driving me nuts. Waiting equals dying and feels like it. That's what I feel like when I'm sitting here in San Diego. I must live 100% balls to the wall or go home that's me it feels like big picture time not so much details about protocols or temperatures or body weights or different parts of my body that feel certain ways it feels like the time for all of those details is just kind of going away now it's big picture time God gratitude I can feel that in my voice it's changing I don't know why something's going on in my vocal cords it's none of my business really I can still talk God gratitude now love truth letting go of all that I'm not that feels like what's alive right now I see how I've been waiting to die my whole life, trying to die, oftentimes. I'm just going to proudly own my craziness because those that mind don't matter. If you love me, then you're going to have to love a crazy guy. Because I'm kind of all of it at once. I feel a lot of things simultaneously. That's hard to communicate to people. I feel very alive. I feel life and death. Grateful and angry. Present and killing time. Um, superhero immortality available. Man and too shy to allow encounters to go anywhere. So I feel... Amazing and available, but unworthy and too shy all at once. Sexual and too ashamed. Loving and resentful. Feel all of that. All those extremes at the same time. 
And if you know me, you'll see me go from one to the other sometimes. I want to say that too. It's not really one. I don't really feel like it's one person in there. I can't care anymore what people think. I just can't. I just have to say what's true, you know. To own my craziness and my pain and my fear and my shame. <laughs> and just be... Um, I clearly see now that waiting to die for what it is, a slow, disguised suicide attempt to die by not living, which will eventually kill. Getting through all the tough topics I see now in these videos, the things I plan to take to my grave, the secrets, suicidal feelings, Asperger's, Waldo, pain, sexual addiction and anorexia, when get, we're getting down to the core here, really, of the things that I never planned on sharing with anybody, you know, that I just find so unlovable. That's what we're getting down to here. And I don't care anymore, and I'm so glad for that. Finding out what is really running me beneath all those secrets, which I intended to take to the grave with me. Now we can talk about being a sociopath. <laughs> And the subject of death, insanity, sociopathy, death, addiction. That's kind of what it feels like where I'm at right now. And I can't care if those are positive, happy subjects. They're just part of me. Um, I believe I'm a closet, high-functioning sociopath with the ability to blend in with all the humans that can actually care and love. I don't know if I have that capacity or not. I think it's this, it might be the greatest source of my tears and pain, possibly. But I don't really connect with that human part of me that cares. I feel like more like an animal on the inside. Just instincts, life and death, pleasure and pain. I don't know if I'm capable of care and love. I feel really scary and sad and ashamed to say that, but I, I think it's true. And I'm not taking it to the grave with me. I'm not being a secret. I can't. My secret will kill me sooner. This feels edgy, real edgy. Can I really let you know this about me? Is it smart? Can you love me anyway? Even if I can't love that aspect of myself. I don't love that part of me that I don't know if I can care or love. So I'm all of that. With me, I'm all of that. We're really getting down to it now.